Immigration and the crisis along the southern border is getting a lot of attention right now. Republicans on Capitol Hill are even taking the Secretary of Homeland Security to task for his handling of the situation. It's his responsibility to prevent these harmful drugs from flowing into our country and to secure that border. And he's done nothing of the sort. House Republicans advanced two articles of impeachment against Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, accusing him of willfully and systematically refusing to enforce immigration laws. Meanwhile, lawmakers are going back and forth on a bipartisan immigration deal, hoping to slow the thousands of migrants coming over the border every day. It's important to point out this immigration issue doesn't stop at the southern border. You've heard a lot from local and state politicians. We've even seen some cities try to establish some protections for undocumented immigrants. Two years ago, Wyandotte County and KCK passed a measure limiting how much local law enforcement officers cooperate with federal immigration enforcement. Municipal IDs were even part of the Safe and Welcoming Act, which was short-lived because of a law pitched by the Attorney General, passed by the state legislature, and signed into law by the governor that year. Substituting politics for law enforcement is rarely a good idea, and that's what's happening here. Why react or why act when Wyandotte County, the most diverse counties in the state, passes a safe and welcoming ordinance like this? Why? Um, we, I don't know. I don't understand. And across the state border, Kansas City, Missouri now has a similar identification card. It's called a fountain card. Looks like this can be used like a driver's license, giving residents access to city services, community centers and the like. Other cities around the country have started similar programs to help undocumented immigrants or people experiencing homelessness access those services. Anyone of any age can get one regardless of immigration status. Mayor Quinton Lucas helped roll out the cards last month. He joins us now here on Heart of the Matter. Thanks for being here. I know anyone can get one of these cards, but let's start with the immigration side of this. It hasn't really been talked about a lot. Why is that? You know, I think people understand the reason that we need folks to be able to have these types of cards in Kansas City. Access to city services, having the ability to open a bank account, which we have through an agreement with the We Development Credit Union, an opportunity to get other health and human services. For us, this is just about making sure that people who are present in Kansas City can succeed. The immigration crisis, the border crisis, won't be solved at 24th and Troost at our health department. However, what I think we will be able to do is say that if you are in Kansas City, no matter your status, you can live a good life, you can support your family, and frankly, that's why we at least took this important step. The loudest critics seem to say, well, this rewards undocumented immigrants and, and gives them access. What do you say to that? You know, to that I say, I have a different challenge than perhaps the president does, even the governor of Missouri does. My challenge is to make sure that our city is safe, that kids can get to school, that there aren't epidemics and other outbreaks, and frankly, that people can work. And for me, if we have populations that may be undocumented, as we do in Kansas City, and as we do in every community in our region, I think it's important for me to make sure that while they're here, they will be safe, they can work, they can be contributors to the economy, because in the event they are not, that is where you see any number of challenges. Our fountain card idea is to make sure that people can have some dignity and stability with life. I think it makes sense. That's why you're seeing a number of American cities doing it. These are much easier to get than, than driver's licenses or state IDs. In that vein, are you getting pushback from Jeff City right now? As we said, uh, we saw Kansas quickly shoot down a similar effort just over the river in Casey. You, you know, and I commend those who tried in Wyandotte County a few years ago. I think it was an important effort. And frankly, it's the story of reality. The reality is, if there are tens of thousands of people who are here in Kansas City or in Kansas City, Kansas, who are actually trying to work, who are trying to contribute, some of whom have been here since their childhoods and they're adults now, then I think it's important for them to have some way to exist, a way to survive, rather than resorting to criminality or any other activity that actually does end up costing us long term. In terms of pushback from Jefferson City, I have not heard it yet. That said, I always understand that they tend to find these things out, so we're not keeping it secret. I think we're just proud of our effort to make sure Kansas Cityans can exist with dignity and can be safe long term. As you mentioned, there are a number of other groups benefiting from this too. What's, what's the priority here? The priority is to say that if there is someone who for whatever reason hasn't been able to have a state-issued driver's license or state-issued non-driver's license, but needs to have an ID to get a job, needs to have an ID to open an account, that this is a way that we're doing it for them. We catch members of our homeless population every day who have this type of challenge who say, look, I'm unhoused, I don't have any of the documents with me. I can't actually sit and do all these requests, it takes me so much time, but you know what? I have a lead on a job at, at X or Y place down the street. Can you help me? 
That's what this is for. An undocumented person who's saying, look, there's a small business that we're trying to build up, but we don't want to have $10,000 of cash just sitting in our apartment that gets robbed, that leads to gun violence, any number of things. Can you help me out? This is the sort of thing that I think can help all of us. And importantly, I have a fountain card now, too. It helps those of us who are trying to figure out how do I interact with city services? How can I find a more efficient way to pay my water bill? If I'm a young person, how do I open an account somewhere? That's what this is all about. I think it makes life easier. I imagine with some of the groups you're talking about, especially of people who are houseless right now, getting the word out, getting the word mm -hmm. to them is a challenge. So how do you overcome that? You know, I, I saw pictures on our first day of full-time sign up at the health department and there were probably dozens of people there getting started. And so the way we get the word out is, is certainly talking to the press, but also through our shelter communities, through a lot of our nonprofits and other organizations saying that this is here and this is available for you. Well, let's just think about it, just for you and me. Getting a license renewal is actually pretty tough, but perhaps we're able to take time off of work, wait in a line for an hour or two hours, go through all the work and have documents, and sometimes they send you back because you don't have them right. If you're somebody who is just getting off the streets and is saying, you know what, I have a lead for a job somewhere, I'm going to take the bus to it, I want to have a document, this makes it that much easier. If you're a 16-year-old who, let's say, is cutting lawns or something of that sort, trying to make sure you have something responsible to do with your money, it helps you too. So I'm incredibly proud of it. I think this is an outstanding program. It's why smart American cities are doing it, and I think in some number of years, more will be doing it as well. All right, we'll be watching the rollout. Mayor Quinn Lucas, thank you so much. You. you can get the cards by going to the City Health Department at 24th and Truce, like the mayor said. For more info and to see what's required, go to the Health Department's website at kcmo.gov.